There we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we got there. Hi, it's Pam. This is Gentle Yoga, Pam Kilbeth. Um, uh, sorry that I'm getting on a little bit later. I was actually told to do that so that there's less space, um, so that they're able to put it on um, YouTube to be able to view it late, later um, on their YouTube format. So uh, let's see. Hi, hi, Lynn. I just saw that. Um, so we're going to be doing some gentle yoga. I think I've got everything figured out. Hopefully, oh, I had a, a class um, kind of crash on me last week in the middle. Uh, we got a booster, so I don't think we're even going to have any router problems. Um, but how about this snow? Is this like crazy? And I don't, it's not even that I mind the snow so much. It's so cold after that 70 degree weather. Hopefully we enjoyed our our couple of days of 70 degrees and we'll get there, right? We'll get there again. So we're gonna start in a comfortable seated position, whatever that is for you, okay? So I'm gonna go way back so you can see my legs. And maybe you're gonna be sitting in uh, cross-legged. Maybe you're gonna be a leg extended out. Maybe you're gonna be sitting on a, a blanket or a towel to lift up the hips. Maybe it feels good to bring your heel um, into that groin area if you're able to have that opening in your hips. And you're gonna pretend that you're up against uh, an imaginary wall and have the back of your head, and both shoulders and bottom rib and both cheeks all lined up against that wall. And let's take a big inhale through the nose and think of filling those lungs. Open mouth, e exhale, let it go. Let's take another big inhale through the nose, fill those lungs. Open mouth, let go of any stress. Inhale through the nose, fill those lungs. And with this exhale, think of fogging up a window. Now let's keep the mouth closed. Breathe in through the nose, fill those lungs. With the exhale, keep the mouth closed, exhale through the nose. Inhale through the nose, fill those lungs. Exhale through the nose, try to find the emptiness of the lungs without going to the point where you're gasping for air. Immediately find that inhalation and exhalation so that you're finding your perfect flow and rhythm of breath that's perfect for you today. With your next inhale, think of reaching through the crown of the head and lengthen that spine. Exhale, think of opening up the chest and allowing the shoulders to roll down the back. Inhale, see if you can feel the rib cage expand wide, east and west. And exhale, think of funneling that waist and press the sit bones down into your mat and then in towards each other. Inhale, reach through the crown of the head, lengthen that spine. Exhale, broad collarbones. Inhale, rib cage expands wide, east and west. Exhale, lengthen that waist. Press the sit bones down and in. So hopefully you have found your rhythm of breath. You have found your spinal alignment. And we're gonna to strive to keep both of these throughout the practice and let the breath be your guide. Never letting it get hindered or choppy by forcing uh, into a pose that's not appropriate for your body. The breath can be your barometer, be your guide. 
Just feel what it feels like with that new breath. How much calmer you feel. It lowers our heart rate, our blood pressure, our cortisol levels. It also oxygenates our blood so that we have more oxygen readily available to transport our nutrients, antibodies, flush out toxins, nourishing, cleansing, and even healing the body in this on a microscopic level. Let's do the same thing with our thoughts, cleanse our thoughts, welcoming positive, pushing away negative. Perhaps allowing happy memories over the last few days to drift in and out of your consciousness, push away any worries, any concerns. Perhaps being grateful for living in this crazy state of Colorado where we go from 70 degrees to 16 in a matter of a day, but we love it anyway, right? We love our four seasons. Push away any list in your head. Let's bring to mind at least one person that we're grateful to have in our life. Maybe dedicating this practice to that person. And push away any thought of competition. Yoga is not about competition. And imagine as if the ventilation system in this room sucks up. Any negative energy carries it out of the room, leaving us with an open, peaceful, grateful heart. So let's go ahead and change the crossing of our legs so we get that equal opening. And now we're going to open up our cervical vertebra, our neck. Inhale, reaching through the crown of the head, and on the exhale, rotate the chin towards your right shoulder. Inhale, bring it center, and exhale, rotate to the left. Inhale, center, exhale, rotate. Inhale, center, exhale, rotate. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, center. Exhale, rotate, hold that rotation to your right, and then think of softening the tissue in the neck and throat, maybe into your shoulder, maybe even up into your scalp. And then tuck the chin. Inhale, bring it to neutral or that starting position. And as you exhale, tuck again, feel that increased stretch at the base of the skull. Inhale, left. One more time. Exhale, tuck. Inhale, left. Let's bring it center and then rotate to the other shoulder and first hold this rotation. Once again, thinking of softening the tissue and the neck and throat, shoulder and scalp. With your exhale, tuck the chin. Inhale, left. Exhale, tuck. Inhale, left. One more time. Exhale, tuck. Inhale, left, bring it center, like you're pouring water out of the top of the head. Ear comes to shoulder. Inhale, left. Exhale, lower. Inhale, left. So be mindful, we tend to shrug that shoulder. Try not to do that. Ear comes down, and then we lift. This is lateral flexion of the neck. Inhale, left. Exhale, lower. Inhale, left. Exhale, lower. Last time. Inhale, left. Exhale, lower. Now, let's grasp our left wrist behind our back. So you're grasping it with the opposite hand, that right hand grabbing the left wrist. The right ear is to shoulder, and that's stretching out the left side um, neck muscles. It's called your scalene muscle group. Let's breathe into that opening. And then we can add on a little uh, different stretch here. Keep the ear there and then just bring the gaze and the chin slightly up and feel how it goes into that throat area. And that muscle attaches behind the ear and goes to your chest and collarbone. And then let's release. 
All right, so let's grasp the right wrist now with the left hand and bring left ear to left shoulder. And first just hold that stretch, opening up those side neck muscles. From there, bring the gaze and chin slightly up to ceiling until you feel the stretch change to that throat area. Breathe. And then let's release. Let's come into our spinal twist. We'll bring the right hand to left knee and we'll have that left hand behind. Inhale, spine long. And then exhale, find your rotation. So abdomen, ribs, chest, collarbone, head is the last to turn. See if it feels okay to add a little gentle pressure against that right knee. Breathe. And then let's release and switch sides. Left hand on right knee, left arm behind. Inhale, spine long. Exhale, find your rotation. Abdomen, ribs, chest, collarbone. Head is the last to turn. Does it feel okay to add a little gentle pressure against that right knee? And how about the shoulders? Are they still down the back? And then let's release. And let's come to all fours. So let's go ahead and we'll start with our cat cow. I'm gonna to come to our side. Hands are in line with our shoulders. Knees in line with hips. Let's start with our gaze forward. By the way, the toes can be curled under or they can be flat. That's totally up to you. Let's see. That you can see more of me if I'm there. Okay, so let's start with our gaze forward. There's our inhale. And then exhale, I start at the tailbone, tucking under, round the spine. At the end, I tuck my chin under. And then I reach to the crown of the head, shine the heart forward, come into cow. Exhale is cat, spinal flexion. Inhale is cow, spinal extension. So we're moving our spine through its full range of motion, spine articulation, to see how many of those vertebras you can feel move. So important to have a flexible spine. And then notice in cat pose, my sit bones are, are towards the, the mat, and in cow, the sit bones are facing the wall behind me. So we are also doing a pelvic rock. And we'll do one more full round of breath. Inhale, actually there's, um, the yeah, inhale cow, exhale cat. And then let's come just to neutral spine and we're going to lift uh, the right hand and we're going to needle it through, okay? So needle it through. I'm bringing my right ear, right shoulder down in the mat. So the left arm can reach overhead on the floor or it can lift up towards ceiling, palm to sacrum, forearm resting on the small of the back, or if it's available to you, binding with that left inner thigh. So you're, you're listening to your breath. You're not forcing into a pose that's not appropriate for you. And then you're gonna release, come back to all fours. Okay. And then we're going to take the left arm and needle it through. And right ear comes down on the mat. And then maybe that left arm, it feels best for you to just keep it down and reach overhead. I like lifting it up to ceiling, palm to sacrum, forearm resting, or binding with the right inner thigh, the left inner thigh. And find that breath, and that will guide you. Let you know if you're forcing into something you shouldn't be doing. Let's release, bring that hand down and let's come back to all fours. So that opened up our chest and shoulder cavities. Let's go ahead and bring our um, left foot forward. The knee is in line with ankle and the right forearm will come to 
uh, that quad, pantosacrum, we hinge forward and we add rotation. And there's our starting point. And for some of us, we're gonna stay here. Others, we're going to add on. Maybe that elbow can come to the outside of that leg. Hands in prayer, adds on a balance factor. And then can you line the elbows up with each other? Shoulders with each other? Can you lift your abdomen off of that quad so we're not collapsing? Breathe. And then let's release and bring that knee back. And let's bring the right foot forward. Knee in line with ankle. Left forearm on right quad, hand to sacrum. We hinge and rotate. Maybe the elbow can come to the outside. Maybe hands in prayer. Maybe lining those elbows up, lining up the shoulders, lifting the abdomen and checking into the weight distribution of the hands. Breathe. And then let's release and we'll bring that uh, right knee back and the left foot forward. This time, instead of right between those hands, let's bring it a full step in front of those hands, come up to all for, uh, come up to a low lunge, lengthen those arms, and we're gonna lean into this front leg. The knee does not go past the toes because we've taken that step forward. There's the beginning of the opening for our hip. And only if it feels good, you add that back bend. And if having the arms up bothers your shoulders, guess what? You can be here and lifting without even the, the long lever arms, okay? So the idea is to open up that hip, open up the chest, and then lowering the arms. We'll shift the weight back. We come on that front heel. And then let's glide down that leg. Or maybe you're flexible enough to hinge from the waist and hands on the blocks, on your mat, and then you tuck your chin, crown reaching towards toes. Make sure you haven't shifted your weight over to that left leg. Excuse me, I guess that's the right leg. Have a little give in that front knee if you need to, and stretch out that left hamstring. Check in with the breath. Check in with your, your neck. If you're looking more forward, you're kind of jetting that chin out and that stresses the neck. Let's go ahead and bring that right knee back or left knee back and that right foot forward in between the hands and then a full step in front of those hands and that's gonna protect our knee. All right, so we check that our hips are square side body long and lengthen and we lean into this left uh, right leg to stretch out the left quad and if it feels okay to add a back bend we add the back bend opening up the heart and it does add on another depth to opening up that back quad breathe Lowering the arms, and we'll shift our weight back, coming on that front heel. And maybe we need to, we've got tight hamstrings, we're gonna glide down that leg, or hinging abdomen as close to quad as possible. Tuck your chin, crown reaching towards toes. Check and see that you haven't shifted your weight into that left hip, right? Make the hips square. And remember, you can bend that front right knee if you need to. And then let's bring that knee back. And we're gonna come uh, back to all fours. And we're gonna come into our first downward dog. So curling those toes under with your next exhale, lift your hips high and find your first downward dog. So, We can think about lifting the sit bones and feel that hamstring uh, stretch go a little deeper. Then check into that all 10 finger pads are equally pressing into your mat. 
energizing the arms. Are the shoulders away from the ears? Can you hug them in towards center body? Can you lengthen your torso? Ribs don't lift off the pelvis. Lower just your right heel down and feel that calf stretch. Left the right, lower the left. And let's pedal those feet. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Lowering both heels down if that's available to you. Do the best you can. Sometimes even just taking a an inch forward, a baby step forward, helps you get those heels down. Experiment with that if you need to. And then we're going to walk, bend the knees, bring the gaze forward, and walk your feet to, towards your hands for a forward bend. And then bring hand to elbow, hand to elbow, and hang like a rag doll. So checking into the four corners of the feet, big toe, pinky toe, inner and outer heel, getting equal weight distribution can add a slight adjustment to the opening of those hamstrings. And also check in with the bend in your knees. You want a little bit of a bend, but if you need more for your back, feel free to do that. And then let's sway those arms side to side. You'll have that. Gentle sway opens up those hamstrings a little different, differently. Opens up the spine, it opens up the shoulders in a little slightly different way. And then release those arms, bend the knees, and let's roll on up. Head is the last to lift, and roll those shoulders back. All right, so we haven't done this in a while, guys. And if you're new, I know this is listed as gentle yoga. I, every now and then, once a month, I throw in a, a, tough, um, a tough move. So we're gonna start with base, uh, an easy, okay? It's rotation. What I'd like you to pretend is that you've got a block between your knees, because we're gonna rotate, and I don't want your hips to rotate, and I don't want your knees to rotate. I want them staying facing forward and make your obliques be the workers, okay? So let's just start by teeing out the arms. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do lateral bend. But we'll do that next, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we tee out the arms, shoulders are down the back. Let's, let's see, this is your right, this is the left, right? Okay, so we're gonna rotate to the left. Exhale, rotate. Okay, so check in. Has your knee turned? Has your hip turned? Okay, so hopefully it has not. They're both facing forward. Now, think of the left fingertip reaching to the wall behind you, and the right fingertips reaching towards me like you're trying to reach my hand. And the gaze can be looking at that back arm, if it's comfortable for your neck. Okay, so now check in again. Is your hip and your knee still facing forward? All right, so let's come center. And now let's rotate to the other side. Okay, go as far as you can go without that knee turning and the hip turning. All right, so, uh, oh, and are the shoulders down the back, everybody? Of course it is, right? Okay, now is the right fingertips reaching to the back wall? And now with the left fingertips try to reach for my hand. Let the gaze follow that back arm if it feels okay. And then let's bring it back center and lower down. Okay, put that in your back burner, all right? Let's do a forward fold and walk the hands out. And we're gonna bring our left foot forward and we're coming into as deep a runner's lunge as you can get into. I have my right foot forward it's between my hands and I'm in a runner's lunge. Now, we're coming up into crescent lunge. This is going to be challenging. Easy way out is you just bring that back knee down. So please feel free to do that, okay? All right, so think of squeezing those inner thighs just like we did before, right? And lift those arms to come into crescent lunge. So if you're here and you're going, no, that, that doesn't feel good then you take a step in with that back leg, or you bring that back knee down, okay? 
Here's our runner's lunge, whatever is appropriate for you. Crescent lunge actually is what it's called. T out the arms. With your exhale, rotate to your left. Squeeze those inner thighs. Fingertips reaching to opposite walls. Breathe. Bring it back center. <laughs> and let's rotate the other direction. Squeeze those inner thighs if you feel like you lose in balance. Pull that belly button in. Fingertips reaching away, shoulders down the back. Bring it back center. Take a step in with that back leg. Find pyramid pose. Oh my goodness. And it's gentle yoga, right? Okay, so bring that back leg forward and it is the right leg that's going back. We're just switching legs. And we find our runner's lunge. You be your, got your own judge, right? Knee comes down if you need to. If you're gonna come from that runner's lunge, squeeze those inner thighs and lift those arms. Remember you can adjust, right? Bring that back leg in, yep, yep. Tee out the arms. Okay, this time we're gonna rotate to the right first. Exhale, rotate. Squeeze inner thighs. Fingertips reaching away from each other. Find that breath, don't hold your breath. Bring it back center. And then let's rotate to the, uh, to the left, to the other direction. Breathe. Bring it back center, take a step in with that back leg. Toes are facing forward, pyramid pose. Oh. Bring the feet together to touch and let's come on up. And we're gonna come into blowing palm. So have those feet uh, touching. Grab your, you're squeezing the inner thighs, you're planting your feet. Grab the, let's start with the left wrist and we're gonna exhale, fold to the right. Sorry, I should have been before our lunge, but that's okay, we got it in. So see if you can feel the connection from the wrist to the elbow, elbow to shoulder, shoulder lifts ribs, breathe into that left lung as you squeeze your inner thighs and plant them um, into your mat. And then inhale, lengthen and lower. We'll do the same on the other side. Grasp the right wrist, inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Breathe, see, feel the connection from wrist to elbow, elbow to shoulder, shoulder to ribs. Breathe into that right lung. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, lower. Great job, guys. We're gonna come into our standing postures and we'll start with our warrior poses. Let's go ahead. Um, I've been told that silhouetting uh, the, the poses is probably the better way to go, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, let's start with our, um, I guess it would be our left foot forward and our right foot back and we've got a nice wide stance, and my right heel is in line with my left arch, and I'm gonna float the arms up to nine and three. So we're bending this knee to whatever depth is appropriate for you. <clears throat> and you're looking over that left hand. That front, that front knee is gently pressing out. As this quad pushes into the hip socket, and we tuck the cheek under. Shoulders are down the back, find that breath. Straightening the legs, lowering the arms. Have the left toes face forward and the right toes face the side wall. Float the arms up, bend that knee, that right knee, and look over that right hand. Remember that you're finding the depth that's appropriate for you 
and you're making sure the knee doesn't go past the toes, you should be able to look down and see your toes. <clears throat> the left quad pressing into your hip socket, tuck the cheek under, lower those shoulders down your back, find your breath. Warrior two. Straightening the legs, lowering the arms. Let's go ahead, have the right toes uh, face forward, the, right, the left toes face the side wall. We're going to take the right toes and have it turn in a 45 degree angle. So it helps us be able to turn our hips without going into our lower back to face that side wall. Bend that left knee and lift the arms for our warrior one. And then have your palms face forward. And it's my right knee, so I'm gonna have my right hand go in front of my left, and then I'm gonna press it to the back wall, to the wall behind me. And think of that, feel that opening in the chest, that front knee gently pressing out. Feel that spiral effect coming up that back leg. Straightening the leg, release the arms and lower. So have the left toes face forward and the right toes face the side wall. Then I'm gonna take these toes and turn it in that 45 degree angle, which then allows me to turn my hips, bend the knees, energize the arms. First finding a warrior one, have the palms face that wall and take the left hand in front of the right and press it to the wall behind you. Opening up chest, feel that spiral effect coming up that back leg, find your breath. And then straightening the leg, release the arms and lower. Okay, so let's have the right toes face forward, the left toes face the side wall. Load the arms up. Let's find our warrior two to start. And we're gonna come into warrior three today. So we'll bring our left to meet our right. And then we hinge from the waist. See if you can find a focal point on the floor, right? And then lifting, uh, putting weight into this front leg, lift the back leg. You can't see me. So maybe, it's just two inches. Maybe you're able to bring it in line with your hip. Maybe the arms can be reaching forward. Maybe you can have your toes face your mat, which squares off the hips, which you eventually want to do. But you know, it's baby steps. And then bend that left knee, bring that right foot down, and we'll switch sides. So we'll have the left toes face forward, the right toes face the side wall. We're teeing out the arms, finding our warrior two to start. And then we're going to bring our left hand to meet our right. And we hinge. We find that drishti, that focal point, put weight on that left leg. Remember, we can drag this back foot first and then lift, maybe two inches. Maybe in line with the hip. Maybe the arms are reaching towards that side wall. Find your breath. And then lower the left leg and bring the right to meet it. And breath center. Great job. We're gonna come into our triangle poses. So we'll, um, let's go ahead and have the right foot forward. <clears throat> I'm just trying to figure out if I want to, yeah, better. I've been told that that looks better. You can follow better, so I better listen. Okay, um, it just feels awkward because it's different for me. Uh, the heels are gonna be in line with each other. Let's have the right toe facing the side wall and the left toe facing me. Hips are facing forward, okay? Flip the arms up. Let the left hip shift to the side wall, reach as far as you can for the other side wall, and then windmill the arms and find your triangle. And maybe you're just touching even above your knee and you're like, hmm, 
I don't know about today. I mean, I've been doing a lot of yard work. That feels a little touchy on my lower back. Please feel free to bend this knee, okay? Otherwise, can you have that knee rotate a little bit more to that side wall? And then maybe you'll be able to sink into that uh, right hip. The gaze is supposed to be up looking towards that uh, left palm. Palm is facing forward, but maybe that doesn't feel good for the neck. You don't have to. Always kind of play with that. And the reason why they suggest adding that on is because that does open up your shoulder more if you're able to bring that gaze up, okay? All right, we're slowly coming out of this pose. Inhale, kind of creep out of it, all right? and lower the arms down. Let's have the right toes face forward and the left toes face the other side wall. Float the arms up to nine and three. Shift the right hip, reach with the left, windmill the arms, and then maybe you're gonna bend this knee. Maybe not. Maybe you're gonna be able to have that knee rotate a little bit more to the side wall and sink into that left hip. Palm, or palms facing forward. How does the gaze feel to look up at that palm? Play with it, see what it feels like. And then let's, with our inhale, slowly come out of that triangle and lower the arms down. Okay, so let's have the left toes face forward, right toes face the side wall. Float the arms up. We're gonna bend that knee, forearm resting, and bring the arm overhead. Standing lateral bend. All right, so we're gonna add on that shoulder opener, right? Fingertips lifting up, palm to sacrum, forearm resting on the small of the back, or binding with that left inner thigh. And if you want to go lower in your lateral bend, this hand can come down on a block, or all the way to your mat. Those that do uh, double bind, feel free. I'm gonna stay here to encourage you to be where you need to be. Find your breath. And then straightening uh, that right leg, release the arm, let's come on up. Have the right toes face forward, the left toes face the side wall. Let's bend that left knee, forearm resting. Bring that left arm overhead. Choose to stay here if you prefer. Otherwise, adding on that shoulder opener, lifting up. Palm to sacrum. Forearm resting on the small of the back. Binding with that right inner thigh. Perhaps going lower in your lateral bend. Let's gently release. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Let's have the left toes face forward, right toes face uh, the side wall. Let's bend this right knee again, forearm resting, bring the arm overhead, and we're gonna do that core exercise. We're gonna be floating the bottom arm up. Remember, we gotta get that core engaged. Pull that belly button in, squeeze those oblique center, lift up on the pelvic floor with your exhale, float the bottom arm up, hold your beach ball. Breathe. Reach with this top arm, so it's the left arm. I'm straightening the right leg. Left arm on left leg, float the left, right arm up for reverse triangle. And release. All right, right toes face forward, left toes face side wall. Bend the left knee, forearm resting. Bring that right arm overhead. Get that core engagement, right? Get organized. Float the bottom arm up, hold that beach ball. Find that breath. Reaching through that top arm, let's straighten the left leg, 
It's right hand on right leg, float the left arm up, reverse triangle. And then reach through those fingertips and lower. So let's come into a forward, a wide angle forward bend. So <clears throat> go as wide as you can, have those toes facing same direction as your hips. Let's first do a uh, interlace those fingers, bring the gaze up and exhale fold. So coming as low as you can. Remember your knees. I don't care if you need to bend them. It's a-okay -A -OK with me. And then think of lifting those arms towards the sky, checking into the weight distribution of the feet is going to add a change, right? It's gonna add a more depth in the inner thighs and then those hamstrings. Now use those arms to help lift you back up. And we're going to do it again. And we're going to add on. Let's take another without those arms. Big inhale, exhale, fold forward, coming center. Right hand is going to go towards your left uh, shin. And then maybe that arm's going to, the opposite arm's going to lift up. So the right arm's going to the left shin, the left arm's lifts up. And what about the gaze? Can you bring the gaze towards that? a left hand. Breathe. Does it feel good to add a little gentle tug? Maybe, maybe not. And then let's bring it center. And now let's take the other hand. So now it's the left hand going to the right leg or vice versa actually. And then lift that arm up. Checking with the gaze. Does it feel good to add a little gentle pull? Remember it's gentle. Lower that arm down. Now, if you have lower back issues, you may want to bend your knees as you lift up. Otherwise, lift those arms wide to come back standing. Lower the arms. And let's bring the feet together to touch at the base of your mat. And we're going to come to our balance pose. So I always like to try to change it up a little bit. Um, I think we're due for figure four. So fig if, if you don't like figure four, guess what? It's kind of a, a variation on um, a tree pose. So, and once again, if you want to be by a wall, right, to hold on to, feel free to go to a wall. We're going to put our weight into our right leg and I'm going to kind of lift the knee and then bring it into that figure four. And hands can come, whoops. I'm not used to looking at me. Now, oh, here we go. That's my excuse, huh? I mean, am I doing excuses? All right, so maybe you're going to stay here. Maybe you're okay adding a little squat with it. So sitting back. So what we get is that uh, stretch in that uh, piriformis, that hip. Some great balance. Always want to work on that balance. And then let's slowly straighten and bring that leg down. Wait into the left leg. Find your dristi. Find your focal point. Bring that. Uh, right foot across, hands in prayer. Feel free to stay here. And if you want to add on, sitting back in a chair. Get a little more opening in that hip. Definitely some quad work there. And then let's slowly come out, lower that leg, and release. Great job. Coming back to your mat if you've left your mat. Big inhale. Exhale, fold, standing forward bend. Hang like a rag doll. Cup your hands over your ears. Tuck your chin so that the crown faces the mat and let the head and the jaw 
and the arms all go heavy. Feel that immediate added stretch for the neck. Then check into the equal weight distribution of your feet and feel how that, once again, can adjust the stretch for your hamstrings as you continue to hang here. Almost sense your spine growing longer. Release the hands, bring your knees down to your mat, and let's find child's pose. Now, we've got different variations on child's pose. I like to have my knees wide on the mat. You might like having them close together, big toes touch, sit bones reaching towards your heels, and maybe the forehead is gonna go directly on your mat. The palms can be up on either side of the body. The arms can be overhead. You can even stack your hands and have your forehead on stacked hands. It all depends on what you like. It feels good. You should be in a relaxed pose, a child's pose. Find that breath. Feel the work you've done so far. And then let's come up to all fours. Okay, and then we're going to lift the right arm and the left leg. So first, concentrate on those limbs reaching away from each other. Feel the lengthening happening. Make sure the hips are square. You got a glass of water on that pelvis. And then check into the strength of the limbs holding you up. Lower those limbs down. Let's lift the left arm and the right leg. <clears throat> so first think of lengthening the limbs and then pay attention to your hips. Can you balance a glass of water on your sacrum? Now pay attention to the strength of the other limbs holding you up. Lower those limbs down. So let's do our alternating opposite arm and leg I always recommend um, using an inhale to lift because we're lengthening, but if you have trouble with balance, use the exhale as you lift, okay? That will help with balance. So either inhale or exhale, we lift the right arm, left leg, lower back down. Left arm, right leg, lower back down. Let's continue. Lift and lower. Lengthen. This works the muscles that follows the spine. It also helps with our gait. If we've ever had any injuries, you might get this exercise in a rehab because it opens up those nerve pathways. <clears throat> Lengthen and lower. Lift and lower. Lift. And lower, let's do it one more time. Right arm, left leg, and then left arm, right leg. Nice job. Okay, so now we're gonna add a little bit of an ab exercise with this. Let's start with the um, right leg extended. And you're gonna bring the knee in, and I'm gonna kind of make a cat pose with the upper, upper back. My nose is gonna try and touch that knee. It won't go anywhere close. Some of you might be able to. And then you lengthen behind you. So tuck and round and bring it back in. Tuck and round and bring it back in. Keep going. So that's a modified plank that we're in. And we're doing kind of a, a crunch, aren't we? So if we're bringing the knee in towards the nose as opposed to you know elbow to knee or nose to knee with the upper back lifting right I don't have to worry about that one more and lower that leg you might feel be feeling a little bit of the upper body right that, that's holding us okay lift the uh, left leg and let's bring it in and lengthen tuck that chin around it and lengthen. Bring it in and lengthen. And tuck and round that spine. 
So spinal flexion, and then we just come to neutral, letting that, that uh, pelvis round under as we bring that knee in. And we did eight, so we got two more, everybody. Bring it in and out one last time. In and out. Bring the knee down. And let's find devotional. So we can have those knees wide again, sit bones reaching back, fingertips reaching forward. Stretch out that spine. Let's come up to all fours for just a brief moment. We're going to be laying on our abdomen and we're going to be doing our cobra pose. Going back as far as I can go, guys. Um, so you might not be able to see me <laughs> until I get into cobra. So just listen to my cues, sorry. All right, so let's have the uh, left ear on your mat. Palms are up, we're on our abdomen. If having that right ear on the mat bothers, it's too much of a stretch, have that right forearm come underneath and uh, you'll get that better, better stretch for you. If you have trouble with neck rotation, stack your hands, have your forehead on the uh, stacked hands. You don't have to add the rotation if it's not appropriate for your neck, okay? Let's switch sides. Right here on the mat. Chin on the mat. Hands are gonna come underneath the shoulder blades. We're gonna get organized. Belly button pulls in, pelvis pushes into the mat. Active legs, let's zip those legs together. Hover the hands an inch or two off your mat. Inhale, reach through the crown of the head. Think of lifting the chest, lifting the sternum. Find your breath. Think of squeezing shoulder blades a little bit close together. Feel how that helps open up the chest. Chest extension, or back extension, excuse me. And then lower the right ear, or left ear back down. Find the breath. Chin comes back on the mat. Hands come underneath the shoulders. We're coming into King Cobra this time. So go ahead, keep the hands down. Pretend they're floating though. Inhale, lift into that Cobra and then start putting weight into your palms. And I don't, feel comfortable totally straightening my arms. It, it gets too much of a strain on my back. So I'm finding what's appropriate for me. What tends to want to happen though, be careful, elbows don't swing out, right? Hug them in. Don't let the shoulders shrug. Keep them down the back. Belly button's in. Think of pushing the pelvis into your mat and find your breath. Lower back down. Let's finish the neck stretch first. Uh, right ear on the mat. And then press back in devotional. Sit bones reaching back. Fingertips reaching forward. And then come up to all fours. And then we're going to come into uh, sleeping pigeon, half pigeon and sleeping pigeon. So if you need to be doing figure four, you're gonna be rolling onto your back, okay? And you'll be doing the figure four first supine. All right, otherwise all fours, curl those toes, lift up and find downward dog. Now lift the right leg and swing that knee through to come to your right wrist. Right knee to right wrist and then the left toes reaching back and we're trying to find our square hips as much as possible. This leg can be on a diagonal or it can be more perpendicular to give you a little bit of a deeper stretch. And maybe you're gonna stay there. Maybe you're gonna creep down, maybe to your forearms, maybe stacking fists, forehead on stacked fists, or all the way down on your mat. 
Maybe even the arms are gonna be able to reach forward. But whatever pose you can find yourself in right now, check in first with your breath. Check in that the shoulders are away from the ears. And even check in with your jaw. You should have a soft jaw. Lift the head, walk the hands back, curl back on that back toe, press up into downward dog. And then we're going to lift that same right leg and give me three leg circles in one direction and then three in the other. Now, if you chose to do figure four on your mat, then you're doing the leg circles up in the air, that same hip you just opened up, right? Lower that leg down, lift the other leg up, and now you're gonna swing the right knee through to come as close to the right wrist as you let the right left toes reaching back, and you're gonna try and find square hips as much as possible, okay? And then we're gonna ease into it if we can. Coming down a little lower, coming on the forearms. Maybe stacking your fists, forehead on stacked fists, or hands or all the way down as fingertips reach forward. Check in with the jaw. Soft jaw, relaxed shoulders, and controlled breathing, right? Let's come back up. And curling back onto that back toe, lifting back up into downward dog. Lift that right leg, give me three leg circles. Three in the other direction. Lower that leg down, bring your knees down. Now we're gonna roll onto our back for a bridge pose. First, let's give those knees a hug. So we'll come on our back, hug those knees in. Maybe rotate those uh, ankles, rotate the other way. And then let's bring our feet to our mat. And we're going to check in that we've got equal weight distribution on our feet and equal weight distribution on our shoulders, pressing into the mat. With your exhale, lift up into your bridge pose. So feel free to stay here or interlace fingers underneath the body, rock side to side, shifting the shoulders under you. And all it does is help us lift up our upper thoracic spine a little bit more. We've got equal weight into the feet, arms are energized towards the heels, pelvis pressing up to the ceiling, and the knees reach away, and yet they hug that beach ball, so we keep those legs in line with our hips. Bridge pose, opening up the whole front side of our body while it strengthens the back side of the body. Release the arms and roll your spine back down. Let's bring the right knee into your chest. Feel that opening. Switch sides. Bring both knees into the chest, arms in a T position. Allow the knees to drop to your right side, head turns to the left for a supine twist. Find your breath. Remember reaching through those fingertips will add on another dimension in this stretch. Feel an opening in the chest. Down the waist, into the hip. And then let's bring the knees center. Let them float over to the other side. Head turns away. And remember to keep the shoulders down and reach through the fingertips.
Let's bring the knees back center for happy baby's pose. Hands grabbing maybe around the hamstrings themselves to get the inner thighs, sacrum down, knees come wide, maybe somewhere along the shin, maybe pinky edge of the foot. Press the sacrum down, let the knees come wide. Last hip opener. And then bottoms of the feet touch, lower them down to your mat. Let your hands rest on your inner thighs, coaxing those adductors, those inner thighs to melt. Make sure you're not arching your back, flaring your ribs. And then bringing the hands to the outside of those legs, Guide those knees together like you're closing up a book. And let's find our Shavasana. Some of us laying down with the knees bent is going to be appropriate. Maybe you like to lengthen your legs one leg at a time. And I'll guide you through your breathing one more time. In through the nose, out through the nose. Let the breath be effortless. And imagine that you are able to guide that oxygen as it enters your body to flow all the way down to your toes, the balls of your feet, the arches, the heels, the ankles. Just let those legs or feet feel, fall heavy on your mat. Continue with that breath, allowing the oxygen, oxygen to flow into the calves and shins, knees, quads, hamstrings. Go ahead and let those legs fall heavy on your mat. Allow the oxygen to flow into the glutes, the small of your back, your lats spreading wide, the shoulders just melt into your mouth. The tension in the abdomen subsiding as the chest opens. The shoulders truly just let go. Allow the oxygen to flow into the biceps and triceps, elbows, forearms, wrists, and into each fingertip. Allow the oxygen to flow up the back of the neck, around the skull to your brow. With soft eyes, heavy jaw, soft throat. And just taking notice how peaceful and relaxed you feel. Know that you got here just by recognizing your own personal breath. This is a wonderful gift you can give yourself every day by bringing this breathing practice home with you. Let's bring to mind that person we started our practice with. We are so grateful to have this person in our life. Cherish this person. This is another tool we can use daily to regroup, reprioritize, de-stress by just taking a moment, making the choice to be grateful. With your next breath, wiggling fingers and toes. You can choose to stay laying down if you prefer, but if you'd like to give those knees a hug, Bring the knees into the chest and allow them to drop to one side. Slowly come up into a comfortable seated position with your hands at your heart center. And I just want to thank you all for, for joining me today. It's such, this is the joy of my day <laughs> to be able to do this. Um, I feel so fortunate.
As a group, let's send protective, loving, caring thoughts to our men and women overseas in harm's way, but also to every, every family affected by this virus, to those that are homebound and alone. Send our love to them, our protection. And if you know anybody in that situation, call them, check in on them. Let's bring to mind that uh, uh, the um, greeting in, in India, a short translation, the light, the love in me salutes and honors the light and love in me. Namaste. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Pam. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I'll be here next week, okay? And by the way, I'm going to use straps, so bring a belt next time, okay? Okay, okay. thank you. All right, thanks. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody doing all right? Going a yes. little stir crazy? Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, didn't help, did it? Well, it sure felt good. I've been working in the yard, and I go, oh, I did too <laughs> so, much. <laughs> so you couldn't go out and do anything, right? No. <laughs> I have never been so far ahead with my gardening. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have this amazing. year. You know, so there we go. Everybody's we gonna have a clean right? house when it's ever when this is over, and people I know are just cleaning out their house. And Goodwill and yes. Salvation Army are going to be yes, they're going to be overloaded. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. So, thank you, Love Pam. you. We'll Bye -bye. be back soon. Okay. Take care. Hang in there.